Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime and I wanted to attack another little proportion problem that has a trick uh, that um, can fool a lot of students. So let's take a look. It says solve the equation for k and here we do see a proportion problem. I'm calling it a proportion problem because I see fraction equal to fraction. A proportion is, to, is um, uh, the definition of a proportion is equivalent ratios or equal fractions. And so that's how I know it's a proportion problem. And hopefully you guys have done proportion problems with me, me before and know this beautiful, fabulous um, truth, which is that cross products are equivalent, meaning that I can cross multiply and the products that I get, the answers that I get when I cross multiply will be equivalent. So let's do that. First, I'm going to do the cross uh, that has the variable in it, not because I have to, but just because I think it's wise. Uh, students usually struggle less when the letters uh, first. So four times K is of course just four K. When we want to multiply together numbers and letters in algebra, we just shove them up real tight so the whole world knows they're multiplying. Now, we said those cross products would be equivalent. So I'm putting an equal sign and I'm, that's going to be equal to the other cross product. So the other cross product is nine times six or 54. And so I get this lovely statement for K is equal to 54. And it's just a one step equation now. Fractions are gone. If I want to solve this to get K by itself, I need to remove the four. The four is currently multiplying, so I'll do the opposite. The opposite of multiply is divide. Now the rule of solving is literally I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. So I will divide the right hand side by 4 as well. Now my change is balanced, so I can be sure my equation will remain equal. Multiplying by 4 and dividing by 4 cancels so that my k is alone. And now 54 divided by 4. Here's why I wanted to do this. If you do this, there are different ways to express this answer. Any of them are legit, and any of them could show up on the GED, any of them. There's not one right way. So when I did that in my calculator, I got 13.5. What did I do in my calculator? I used a divide by symbol, 54 divided by 4. This is one legit answer. This is the decimal form of the answer. However, that's not the only way this answer could look. Cause, so I just kind of want to explore here. Uh, anytime you have pieces and parts of numbers, they could be expressed using decimals or they could be expressed using fractions. So you could, maybe you did this problem and you look and your multiple choice answers are all fractions. I don't want you guys to lose your mind, okay? Uh, what I need you to realize is you could have just as easily done this exact same problem and signaled to your calculator to get a fraction answer instead of a decimal answer by using a fraction bar. So how I could have done that is I would have typed in n over d, n over d. That's the fraction button. Then I would type 54 on the top of the fraction uh, and arrow over to type 4 on the bottom of the fraction and press enter. Once I did that, it would give me the fraction 27 over 2. Now I know a lot of you guys do not like what are called improper fractions when the top of the fraction is bigger than the bottom because your third grade teachers scarred you so badly they, because they did not accept uh, improper fractions in their classes. However, I'll just let you know that improper fractions show up all the time on the GED. They're perfectly legit answers. There is such a thing as 27 halves. You could have like, for example, 27 halves of apples. It would be a lot of apples, but you know, I could cut up a bunch of apples and start handing you over halves, one half, two half, three halves, until you had 27 halves in your possession. It is a legit number and it could be the form that shows up on your GED as the answer. But what if you neither saw that decimal answer nor that improper fraction? What if you looked and all the multiple choice answers were mixed numbers? What would you do then? Well, your calculator, your TI has a lovely conversion button. It's in green up above the um, times 10 to the N button. It looks like this. You see it N over D 
convert to U N over D. That's the button that makes improper fractions become mixed numbers or mixed numbers become improper fractions. Note that that button is green. Those things are in green. So you'll need to hit the second key, the green key first. So that's what I'm going to hit. I'm not <clears throat> clearing my screen. Currently 27 over 2 is still sitting there as the last answer on my screen. That's what my calculator will pick up. And then I will press second and that N over D to UN over D uh, button, and it will just automatically convert the last answer I got into a mixed number. And you can see that's also 13 and 1 half. Now you might say, but Kate, 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 what's the right answer? And I'm like, yes, 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 they're all three right answers. But Kate, which one will it be on the GED? And I'm like, y'all, it could be any of those three. Either they will specify how they want your answer given, like they'll tell you to give it in a mixed number formula uh, form, or the multiple choices will, will be what clue you on. The multiple choices are all fractions, then you know you want a fraction answer. Or any of the three would be legit acceptable answers if like it, say it was a fill in the blank kind of question. So anyway, uh, that means, sorry about that, but you have to understand this all three ways. Ah, but your calculator will help you with that. And if you did have this problem on the GED, you definitely have a calculator. You do any time you have an algebra problem of this type. Great. So if you have any questions about this or any other GED math concept, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.